Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Miranda and I am the Enchantress of Avalon. So the whole start of this video holding these dead flowers is a little bit of a hint as to what this video is about. Although you probably ascertain that by the title. Today's video is another in my Gothic Romance series and today I am focusing on Ophelia from Hamlet as Shakespeare's gothic heroine. Now, I know anyone who knows gothic literature is going to think, well, no, because Shakespeare much predates gothic literature. He was writing in the Elizabethan era and gothic literature didn't really gain a foothold until the 1700s, the end of the 1700s. How can I call Ophelia a gothic heroine? because she has all the trappings of one. And that's what I'm going to get to in this video, as well as discuss little bits, bits and pieces that show her having much more depth than we may imagine. And without further ado, I'm just going to jump right in. So as I said, Ophelia is the central female figure in Shakespeare's fantastic tragedy, Hamlet. This is my copy that I have that isn't combined with other Shakespeare works and it's kind of funky looking which is why I bought it I thought it was cool and I am going to just read some of the snippets from Ophelia's mad scene which is her downfall so here's her talking about flowers and memories Again, hence why I was holding flowers, and we'll get into just how important flowers are to her. So she says, there's rosemary, that's for remembrance, pray you love, remember, and there's pansies, that's for thoughts. And there's fennel for you and columbines, there's rue for you, and here's some for me. We may call it herb of grace, oh Sundays, oh what must, oh you must wear your rue with a difference. There's a daisy, I would give you some violets, but they withered all when my father died. They say I made a good end, for Bonnie Sweet Robin is all my joy. She sang that last line. She is going mad and she's singing and talking about flowers. This is after betrayal from Hamlet and seeming rejection. So... That's the image we often associate with Ophelia. This beautiful, innocent young woman who goes mad. Mad because of how the man that she loved treated her. Mad because of the death of her father. Mad because of all of these coalescing horrors that were plaguing the court of Denmark at the time. And in a later scene, we have the queen telling Hamlet that it was so sad what happened to Ophelia because she wanted him, she wanted him to marry Ophelia. She wanted Ophelia to one day be his bride. And he at that point hadn't known what happened. But of course, after her mad scene, she drowns while singing and picking flowers. So flowers are intrinsically linked to the death of Ophelia and also intrinsically linked to her life. She was this sweet innocent flower of a girl who withered and died because of betrayal it is a poignant tale and it is something that sticks with the reader and when i was a teenager i very much connected with the character of ophelia i think a lot of teenagers do especially teenage girls who are a little too romantic i was definitely one of them so we I also want to get into now some people that have famously portrayed Ophelia and have had tragedy in their lives and it seems sort of linked to it. Most famously was the pre-Raphaelite model and artist in her own right, Lizzie Siddall. Now Elizabeth Siddall was a pre-Raphaelite model turned artist in her own right who was discovered when she was working in a shop and she knew 
coming from not very wealthy means that she would do well in making this financial step. But in the Victorian period, being an artist's model was seen as not much better than being a sex worker. And in fact, many artist models were originally sex workers. So she was sacrificing her own reputation to do this, but she became the true face of the Creophilites, which is actually the subtitle of this book. It has another subtitle. I think it's something like Vic pre raphaelite Supermodel, Victorian Supermodel, but this is the subtitle I have it under in my copy. It's by Lucinda Hoxley, and it is the only full-length biography I know of of Elizabeth at all. If you happen to be a fan of the pre raphaelites and know of another, I would love to read it, so please comment it in the comments below. But it's the only one I'm aware of that is a full-length biography on the life of Elizabeth at all. And she famously was the model for John Everett Millay's Ophelia. I'm going to hold it to the screen. This is the painting. I think most of us have seen this painting. It is very evocative. It is Ophelia drowning to death, surrounded by flowers in this gorgeous opulent gown. And true to the pre-Raphaelite pre style, this is all very realistic, especially all of the flora and fauna are very realistic around her. As Malay actually did paint that part first, he went out and painted in nature to make sure that all of his flowers and greenery and water looked appropriate. Now, there's a famous story about Elizabeth Sedol during the painting of this painting. Basically, in order to paint her in this way, Millet had to have her in a tub of water wearing that dress and be submerged in this water, in this tub, which was lit from the underneath with candles to keep the water warm. And she would have to lay there for hours on end as he was painting this portrait. But famously, at one point, the candles burned out and Millet, absorbed in his painting, did not realize. And being the consummate professional that Elizabeth Siddall was, she said nothing as she lay there in freezing cold water until he was finished. And of course, by the time they realized, she was starting to come down with a fever to be very sick. And he had to go and apologize to her parents. Luckily, she survived this. But she did have health issues for the rest of her life. There is some debate over whether some of her subsequent health issues were related to that particular incident or if she'd been really kind of sickly her entire life, which has also been posited. But one thing's for sure, she did, like Ophelia, meet a very tragic end. She died in her early 30s of a laudanum overdose because she was addicted to laudanum. And at that point, she was married to the another pre raphaelite artist, Dante Gabriel Rossetti, who painted the painting on the cover of this book. This was a posthumous painting in honor of his late wife. And before that, she had miscarried their child and went a little bit mad herself after. Actually, I believe it wasn't miscarriage, I believe it was stillbirth. Let me correct myself there as she couldn't psychologically deal with it, she was often known to rock an empty cradle, which is appropriately tragic for someone portraying Ophelia. The other person I want to mention as having portrayed Ophelia and having tragedy in her life is Marian Faithful. This is her autobiography. I highly recommend if you're a fan of classic rock music. She portrayed Ophelia in a 1968 film version of Hamlet. It is fantastic. And of course, I'm not going into the tragedies of her life, but she did have a lot of struggles, but she's a true survivor. So please read the book. It's really good, actually. And now I want to get into a little bit of a more modern take on Ophelia and how she isn't just the tragedy. She is a little bit more to her. Uh, basically, there is this 
novel. It's a young adult novel written by Lisa Klein. I wanted to get her name right. And it was the novel that was eventually turned into the 2018 film titled Ophelia starring Daisy Ridley. This is a new take on Hamlet from the perspective of Ophelia. So we're going all through Ophelia's story from her perspective, which is very unique. And if you don't want spoilers for this, uh, you might want to stop here and come back to finish this video afterwards. So at the end, when Ophelia really would have gone mad and died, she doesn't. Because it turns out that Hamlet's rejection of her was, in this version, just a smart political ploy in order to protect her. And they actually had secretly married, taking a little bit from, you know, your Romeo and Juliet, inspired by other Shakespearean works. And they had married. So when Hamlet dies, Ophelia has already faked her death in order to get away. And she goes to a nunnery when she finds out Hamlet has died, and she lives out her days there. And she gives birth to their child. Because in this version, Ophelia gets to survive and have a and thrive having a child of her own, which is a beautiful way to kind of say that struggles in our lives and tragedies in our lives need not be the end. We can always pick ourselves back up and continue onward because Ophelia as a gothic heroine is a gothic heroine because she embodies this nature of having these horrible things happening around her and supernatural events happening around her. That's a staple of the gothic genre and it's also a staple of plays like Hamlet where Hamlet's father's ghost appearing sets everything into motion. And like many gothic heroines, Ophelia gets caught up in this. But I also want to note, let's not associate these people that have played Ophelia and had tragedies in their lives as just being Ophelia's. They are so much more. They have a depth of life that Ophelia didn't in the play. And only now today are we discovering how much depth, th depth they have to them. Again, please read these books if you're interested in Elizabeth Sadal or Marianne Faithful. You won't regret it. And also with reimaginings of these works, we are deepening an understanding that maybe even the original Shakespeare did not realize what could be held within. So I do hope that you have enjoyed this little bit unconventional variant of a gothic romance video here on my YouTube channel. I will link some of my blog posts from whiteroseofavalon.life down in the description box below relating to this topic. And please do like, comment, subscribe. It does mean so much to me. So I hope you have a fabulous, morbid, and macabre Monday, everyone. Bye now.